Hey YouTube, not so slim Jim coming to you with a new video. Yay! I know I took last week off. Unfortunately, I had to go to San Antonio, visit with my lawyer, talk about stuff, help my guy CJ Grisham out, had a bunch of stuff to do around the house, and I was super duper crazy busy, so I didn't give you guys some love. I am sorry, but I am here now and I have listened to you guys about a subject you guys want to hear about, and I'm making a video on it. So, a lot of people had questions about the Texas Suppressor Freedom Bill and concerns about the legality of being able to manufacture a suppressor without going through the federal government. And a lot of people were looking at the Kansas Suppressor Freedom Bill that they had a few years ago when a couple guys who got in trouble for it. So, I wanted to, one, do kind of, uh, as my guy Viva LaFry says, a 10,000 uh, foot overview of it and see exactly what that case had and how it relates here to Texas. Now, first of all, both the Kansas bill and the Texas bill are virtually identical. All it says is, hey, they're legal to manufacture in the state as long as you put manufactured in Kansas slash Texas, you know, for obviously for whichever state you're in. And it does not require the federal government to give you permission to have to have a serial number, to have a tax stamp, or to do a background check to manufacture them very simple very easy that's all the law consists of so in kansas what had happened is there was two gentlemen one one gentleman who owned a army navy surplus store his name was uh shane cox and he was manufacturing uh ar-15 lower receivers and suppressors that were marked uh, either made or manufactured in kansas i'm not 100 percent sure on that one um and another gentleman named Jeremy Kettler. Jeremy Kettler was the guy who had bought one of the suppressors. Now, Shane Cox had been on Facebook, and he was advertising for his store, hey, I have these suppressors, I have these, you know, lower receivers, they're really inexpensive because, you know, they're not a FFL item, you can come buy them, you don't have to have a background check, you don't have to pay tax stamp, you don't got to do anything, come on down to my store, you know, they're less expensive to produce because I don't have as much federal regulation, come get them. And then Jeremy Kettler had bought one of his suppressors and had it on whichever firearm he had, and he was shooting it, and on Facebook, and hey, look, I got this suppressor that works really, really well, and I didn't have to do a background check or tax stamp, and so on and so on. Well, of course, the FBI and the ATF monitors Facebook. I'm not sure people are aware of this, but social media is monitored by the federal government. So is YouTube. Hi, Greg. That's, that's, that's my ATF agent. He's watching. Anyways, so the ATF decided to make an example of these two gentlemen. And, of course, they couldn't bring them to a state court because it's not illegal in the state. So they brought them to federal court. And they had the FBI and the ATF come in there and, you know, hot, 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 grab them. And uh, they end up going to court and they argue that it's not illegal in the state level. And because it's not illegal in the state level, that they have the right to be able to do it. Well, of course, in the Constitution, Title IV, we have this thing called the Supremacy Law. The supremacy Law says that the federal government and federal laws are the supreme law of the land. So anything that the federal government says that is greater than the state is there in fact the law now originally it was designed for interstate commerce and to protect people so if the, if the federal government goes hey black people can vote black people are not slaves it's the law where states can't come up and go oh well they can't do this they can't do that it was designed for that specific reason but as the governments and everything decided to progress, they were like, oh, no, we're going to use it to, instead of making people more free, we're going to make them less free because we like to do that kind of stuff. Thanks, ATF. So, anyways, they brought them to court and they argued and argued. And uh, Shane Cox was uh, eventually found to have eight felony Felony counts of manufacturing, possession, and transfer of NFA items. Now, normally you would think in that situation, a guy would get somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or so years in a federal prison, and he would end up being someone's girlfriend. 
he ended up getting two years probation and an $800 fine. Now, I know he had to pay quite a bit of money in legal fees and things of that nature, so it ended up being considerably greater, but that's all the federal government could get at him. Two years probation, $800 in fines. And Jeremy uh, Kettler, the guy who bought one, which would be, hey, you know, illegal possession of an NFA item. You look like 10 years right there. You got one year of probation and a $100 fine. So in the state where it's legal and the ATF threw all their might at them, the only thing they could get was probation and a fine. Yes, and I know court fees are expensive. Believe me, I, I've been through it. It's stupid how it happens, but that's what the ATF could muster in a situation like this. The big thing to take away from it is the fact that, yes, the ATF and the federal government can still come at you and they can still do it, but it's extremely difficult to do so when they don't have local law enforcement to back them. Now we got to look at a similar situation with marijuana because that's where a lot of people bring the point of, well, what about marijuana? Now, when marijuana first became legal in uh, some states, federal officers were still going and arresting people. But as marijuana became more and more and more legal in more states, hell, it's even legal here in Texas in some limited amounts, less federal officers are going after people because they realize, hey, we literally have tens of millions of people who are able to legally use marijuana and who legally do do it. We have people who are manufacturing it. We got people who have licensed them up to grow it, sell it, all kinds of stuff. There's no point in going after these people any longer. So they only focus on the states where it's illegal or the interstate travel. So if you have it legal in Colorado, but it's not legal in, let's say, the higher percentage THC stuff in Texas, they're only going to go off people who are bringing it from one state to another state. That's what they're going to focus on. And if we look at something similar like this with the suppressor bill, if we look at, okay, it's legal in, in Kansas, becomes legal in Texas. And this is a big one for Texas because if you look at the pro-freedom states in both size and, and population, Texas, even though it's not the most pro-gun state, is the biggest state. I know technically Alaska is bigger, but it doesn't have very many people. So by Texas jumping in and saying, hey, we're doing this, we're going to get more states in the future to go, hey, if Texas is doing it, we, we can't let them show us up. So more states are going to start doing it. And eventually when we get you know, 10, 15 states saying it's legal to manufacture a suppressor, the federal government's going to get off our asses. They're going to allow us to, to do it. And eventually, they're going to repeal it. We're going to get the, the Hearing Protection Act. They're going to remove it from the NFA list. And this is, this is a movement forward. So until then, yes, you can manufacture them. But I would say there's a few things you need to do to be careful. One, don't manufacture it and then take it and then like put it on your Instagram and your Facebook and, you know, put it all over the place going, hey, look, I got a whole assembly line of these things going and I'm selling in the back of a Burger King uh, out of my, you know, uh, Acura Integra. Come pick them up for 150 bucks a pop. Probably not a very smart idea. If you want to manufacture them and sell them, do so where ATF agents probably aren't going to be at. Uh, if you want to manufacture manufacturing for yourself, don't put them all over social media. In fact, get one of those really nice uh, heat wraps put over it so it's pretty indistinguishable from a non-made in Texas one. Or better yet, just kind of keep it to yourself. Or do what a lot of people are probably going to be doing and manufacture it. And then when you get a spare couple hundred bucks and you don't have to worry about waiting, form one it. That way you can say, hey, federal government, ah, there's $200, shut up. I already got my suppressor. I'm using it. It's cool. Whenever your tax stamp comes in, cool, okay, whatever, I'll take it. Put some numbers on it. Now it's legal on both ends. Shut up. So if you guys got any more questions, comments, or concerns about the subject, because I know a lot of people are going to, leave them down in the comment section. Till next time, you all have a great day.